Hey everyone, Derpy here, and welcome to my hunt for the trim for my, to welcome to my hunt for the Chimera raid warm up, where I'm gonna go through, hit all the targets, and see what's up. So let's go ahead and just get right into it. So I'm just gonna be going over the targets. I'm gonna go from lowest to highest. So if you want the higher targets, you're still gonna have to be here in a little while. But let's just see what's going on here with the raid briefing, with everything that we know here. So. The targets that we're going to see is we're going to see a whole bunch of them, mainly Assault and Siege. Assault is going to be higher tier than Siege. So, for example, I'm going to start out by hitting the Siege targets with my Shrikes and Eradicators, the 40s, and the C-Set. Move up to the Nemesis and Saturn in the B-Set. Go off with the Dragoons, which most people probably have from last raid in the A-Set. I'll even show the new 402 with my Scoundrel. And I'm also then going to finish off with the 132 and 130, which are the big prize items for the night. So... Let's just go ahead and get started. I'm not going to use any crews for several of these lower targets. I'm just going to launch my strikes as is with no crews. And hello to everyone in chat who's watching. And let's get started. So the strikes are going to be best against the level 48 targets, which are only pay at about 5,000 points. And something that's interesting to note about these targets is that there is a set. You do get 5k points for finishing it, but there is a hit down if you use tier 8 ships, like Eradicators even, or Dragoons as tier 8.5, so it counts as tier 8. There is a hit down penalty if you use those against, if you use your higher fleets against this, and that should theoretically stop some of the high level players from just grinding and hitting everything with only Eradicators and autoing everything. But it may, it may not, we'll have to see. I don't think that can take away the set bonus. You're still going to get minimum 5k points for set you complete. But this is just me showing you what the target is, not necessarily saying this is the best one for all players. And strikes are pretty old at this point, so most people probably have them. Now my fleet actually only has one only has one strike that's actually built. That's my flagship. The rest are uh, just blank. So We've seen this target before. It's familiar. It was the uh, was the 100 level target in a set a while ago, in in the rate where the strikes and eradicators were the top holes. So this is familiar, and I should be able to do it fairly easily. And I was actually expecting to see a new target. It's generally a positive positive thing that we've seen this target before, but that means that higher level players again have an advantage because they have more inherent knowledge and they know how to do the target. Like they all, I've seen this before, so I know how to do it. The memory, muscle memory, whatever you want to call it, is still there. So it's going to be easier for me to do this target. I'm starting out hiding behind that top island, and then going to drive in and shoot this little field thing here, get that taken care of, and move around and hide back behind these land tiles. Now, the good thing about the strikes is they can't be hit while they're submerged, and they're submerged while they're moving. So if you're moving and you're not going through an aura, you're safe. My second point I'm going to surface is over on the right side here, and I'm going to target this launcher here because that's what deals the most damage to my strikes. Everything else should be blocked by the islands. If I recall correctly, I was able to do this target with the Eradicators back when it was originally implemented. I may try and do that again later. I might even have to watch my own video first to see my path to see how I did the target so I can do it again. But if I recall, this target was doable with Eradicators, although I did take lower damage using my Shrikes. If I'm remembering everything correctly. The path here is fairly simple. It does take a while, especially with just one ship. But the good thing about one ship is all these radioactive turrets. You're not taking any damage from them because, or you're not taking more damage from them because your ships aren't taking splash damage because you only have one. Hello to the bowl in chat there. Um, looks like we have a bunch of people tuning in. Great, so once I kill this next one, I'm going to move up and kill my next radioactive one before I loop back in the center, just so I'm targeting fewer things at once. My strike is ranked here, it is legendary. That should be expected at this point, especially on a fleet this old. I actually don't know how many lower levels actually have strikes built versus dragoons, seeing as how dragoons were more recent. So maybe the B targets with Dragoons are going to be more achievable, or the A targets with Dragoons are going to be a little bit more achievable. 
It looks like I made a mistake here. I forgot that there was the heavy launcher turret right here, so I surfaced inside of that. I'm just going through, right here I can just sit here and kill things on auto. It shouldn't make a difference what order I target any of these things here because it's just so low. Uh, they're not, none of them are actually doing any damage to me as I sit here. And this target only pays out 5,000 points and is also part of a 10,000 set bonus. So about 10,000 points on average if you're hitting the whole set. And that's not a lot. You're not going to do your whole raid. You're not going to get the top sets doing this target, especially considering you will not be able to auto this with your strikes or eradicators. It will just be too difficult. I did take some extra damage sitting in that little chain there. As you see, saw that little cannon, I was being shot out there when I shouldn't have been, so I did take ex extra damage there. It's a fairly simple target. Uh, once you get the hang of it and once you've done it before, everything gets pretty muscle memory. You go through and do the same thing again and again. I would say the biggest things to watch out for in this particular one, this level 48, are the throwers because those will deal the most damage to you. And just make sure you stay outranging these cannons there. If you want to use a crew, I would highly suggest one that increases building damage, not one that increases defense or evade because they won't be that useful at all here. Ones that increase building damage, or like wrecking crew, are going to be the most useful in this target for completing it and doing enough damage and um, killing buildings faster is what your goal should be with this target and like I said I might go ahead and see if my eradicators can do it later but I'm just going to go through this target once so we can just see everything once and be done with that I'm not sure people caught on here but I'm going through lowest to highest and I'll be showing my pegasus fleet at the very end once I've done everything else so we'll get there when we get there It doesn't seem that I'm finding any glitches or anything in here. It looks all pretty standard, standard rain target. Let's see, someone saying in chat, it looks like Perman Semper 82 is saying that uh, strikes worked well, and but they were scrapped after the survival change, and that's true I didn't think about. The survival change would have impacted ships that were already built before that, a little bit at least, but it looks like the damage I'm taking here is still pretty reasonable, nothing too difficult. I did mess up a little bit, and it looks like I can do about 6 or 8 on my flagship only here. So like I said, the payout is going to be at 5,000 points for the level 48. And if you hit the level 46 as well, then you're going to get more points on them. So damage, mostly ballistic and radioactive. If you do this 100% correct, you might only take only radioactive. Total repair, 12 minutes. Look at that, almost instant. So that looks pretty good. Um, so overall, my thoughts on that target, I'm happy with it, and I think it's a very doable one. It's We've seen it before. It's well-tuned, well-balanced for a Shrike fleet. I'm happy with that target. No complaints, no changes, at least from a at least from an average play perspective. I will say that you would not want to try to auto this target because you're going to end up taking a lot of damage, where even if sometimes the Shrikes aren't auto, They'll be spinning around circles. So I'm happy with this target if you're if you're trying to hit it with strikes. The point payout is not good. You're not going to be able to auto it, which are probably things that Kixai has designed on purpose. Oh, looks like we also have two TLCs that are offered. I might see if I can hit those now or maybe later. Uh, one for getting a silver fish, which should allow you to. Um, I'm not sure what about, what that will allow you to do, honestly. And because there's no skirmish things in this raid, so it, getting a silverfish won't help you with anything. But the Beyond the Breach one, I'm going to think I might have to do that to get some upgrade tokens for PvP ships. Because upgrade tokens do make a difference for PvP ships. So, yeah, what's the, why is the silverfish in the raid there, in the, in the TLC? There's no reason to have it. Having a Buccaneer or Hydra would be a much better prize than the TLC, even an Eradicator. Have an Eradicator TLC so that you can hit at least one target with an Eradicator fleet. There's no reason to offer the Silverfish here because Skirmish isn't used. I don't know if that's an oversight in Kicksize part or what. 
Looks like we have Cuttlefish and Skull Bones in chat there. Let's see. Permanent Semper 82 asks again, how hard are the raid targets for uh, non-upgraded pegs? We'll find out. My pegs are not upgraded. My Pegasus fleet, not upgraded. And we'll see. I'll show you exactly how difficult that is with non-upgraded pegs. I haven't hit the raid target yet or seen anything about it. So you'll see that exactly as I see that. Let's see. Level 46 target. I don't remember this particular one. Let's, oh, yes, I do. Yes, this was this was from the Eradicator target. So you want to split one tank off. So all the splash damage goes to one thing and prioritize the throwers is what you're going to want to do here. Same exact path as I'm following. And you're going to want to try and keep moving because that will reduce damage up to about this point. Once you're shot up by that first, let's see, this, you want to prioritize the throwers there and, uh, you want to not be caught in the firing arcs of these higher cannons here because those deal the bit those deal a lot of damage you want to avoid being caught in firing arcs of things and most of my damage is going to be on my on my on my flagship here again the one that's driving out at front and this is not perfect i don't think i've hit this target in months because we haven't seen it in game in months or if that it's been in some tlc i haven't hit so i am a bit out of practice but again, this was the high-level target a year and a half ago, or a year ago, whatever it was, when the Eradicator raids were. This was the highest-level target that everyone had to complete. So this is still a fairly high-skill target. Same thing with the Shrike fleet. Low levels or generally lower skill haven't had enough practice. It's going to be harder for them to go through and finish, finish the raid. It's going to be harder for them to hit the targets because they're higher skill. These targets are... are are not as accessible as if it was just let it run on auto or driving. You'll get about the same amount of damage regardless. So that's, I guess that might be a critique I have on these targets here because it's the, they're still challenging, they're still complex, and maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's fun, and you can't auto them that easily. I'm sure you can auto this one, but your damage wouldn't be very good. You wouldn't like it. So... And even if you were to auto it, it's 5k points, 10k points if you complete the set. And that's not really going to get you that much at all. It wasn't like it wasn't like the old last one where you could split individual one bat ray, one bat ray, one razor tail, and just auto everything. Auto of the level 40 targets last raid. So it's going to be harder for, low level, for high levels to farm targets like this. And that's probably generally a good thing. You know, you want people hitting the right targets, but you, but you also want people to have options. So it's a little bit of a mixed basket here. Let's see, this target was 5k points and the set bonus for a total of 10k. Most of my damage was radioactive. This little bit was ballistic. If you drive perfectly again, most of it, more of it's going to be radioactive than is ballistic. Damage was 9 minutes. Really good repair. They might even have lowered the damage on either they lowered the damage on things or the survival update made my fleets way better um, to have damage this slow because this is repeatable if I take everything back to base and go through instant repair it might be doable if I drive better it might be instant repair every single time anyway I'm going to show my build here I didn't for the strike but I'm going to show my build it's a fairly simple one pretty standard one I have a couple videos on it on my channel. The only difference is one of these is up to U3, and that has an extra armor point. It's this one, and that's going to help out a little bit with some more damage, but it's a fairly simple fleet, fairly straightforward fleet. If I'm giving my thoughts on the target, again, it's an old target. It's recycled, so it's doable, but it's not accessible to lower levels, so that's a challenge or difficulty. It's a still a bit of a higher skill target, but you can't auto it, so it's important to note that. Anyway, that was a level 40 set. So the next one up is the Nemesis X and Saturn against the level 60 and level 62. Let's start my Saturns first. These are the Kicksai build Saturns that most players got during the redemption period. So the Kicksai build Saturns, they're not the best ones. I think if you want to have the best countermeasure, you have to switch some countermeasures around, maybe a special or two. But these are the best. These are Saturns, they're regular ones, they work. The tricky part is probably going to be driving. I'm going to speculate that we're going to have very similar. We're going to have these targets are probably going to end up being recycled too. We're going to have seen them before, which means there'll be more detailed videos out that are further breakdowns on these low level targets, but it's just called something else. Like it might be called the 100, 112 target 
even though it actually right now is the level 60 target. So we'll have to see what's up with that. Let's see, have we seen this one before? Yep, it looks like this is one I've hit in TLCs and raids and everything before. So we we have seen this. You can do this with Nemesis or Saturn. I've done it with both, generally more my Nemesis, but it's a really simple one to do. Now, I have two options. Option one is to drive fancy and try to reduce some damage and park the ships in the clouds and leave them and lure them in with the flag. I don't know if I really want to have that patience, so I might just stack the fleet. Maybe I'll just split one hole off from the others and drive the flag a little bit separated and try to kill try to kill more things that way, just having a little bit just driving a little bit separated to have it so I take a little bit less splash damage. I have a lot of things coming at me at once right now. It would have been smarter to split and have have one come and I only deal with the ghost crawlers first before I trigger everything else. Let's see. Splash damage is great here. Now I am probably taking more damage than I need to. If I wanted to hide in the clouds, I'm sure I could do that. But the clouds aren't very near everything else here, so it would take a lot longer. And honestly, Nemesis might might be better for this target from what I remember. It's definitely doable with both of them. Now Kick Size recommendation on there is to use the Saturn, so that's what I'm showing. And it's not a bad recommendation. Because especially when you get to right here, you end up triggering a bunch of these small little ships to come in. And if you get caught up here dancing around, driving around, you're going to, with the Nemesis, you're going to get caught up and these small Viper fish that come in from the top are going to, are going to hurt. Let's split everything off there. Great. Look, all that damage is going into my flag and then on the back line from that specific encounter. That specific little, little battle between those things. And once I kill this top purple building again, more things are going to get triggered from the bottom here. They're all hiding at the bottom. And I also have an, a set of regular dagger tooth ships at the top that I'm going to have to deal with too, and a stonefish hiding here. Often in these targets, if you're because the stonefish is a sub and it stays submerged until you're very close to it, if the battle it looks like you've killed everything and you you actually haven't sometimes the stonefish might just be hiding somewhere behind here so you have to split your fleet up and go find it if you think you finished the target but it's not completing and there's still a little bit of health left that might be the case so just split your stonefish off just split your ships out to go find the stonefish let's see i will show the build for this i'll show the build for all my things and uh this is a fairly simple build Again, damage looks reasonable. It's definitely higher damage than the level 40 and uh, level 40, level 46 and 48. And looks like I did exactly what I said I would have, and there's something hiding in some of the targets somewhere. Yeah, we have a stonefish hiding in the back that wasn't seen. It can't, did move close enough for my ships to see it, but it was hiding. I was going to have to split everything up. Great, so that was level 60 target, and that paid out a total of 25,000 points. Damage was mainly penetrative, which is what I would have expected, so that's not really something that's very avoidable at all. If you do use your Nemesis X and drive perfectly, all your damage will be penetrative. Let's see, 34 minutes damage, also known as one coin if you're coining this target, which I wouldn't really recommend, but uh, the, again, the, the, the ship build here is this Kixai average one that they gave people for free to try participate in events. So that's that's the build, it's not great. My driving could have been a little bit better. Maybe if I split sh ships up and use different ones as tanks and, and use clouds to hide behind things, maybe you could get that down to instant repair, but still not a lot of points for just one target there. Overall thoughts on the target, I think it's very doable. I like this even better than the old than the than the 40, 46 and 48 because you can kind of bull rush with your Saturns and it doesn't require a lot of skill to take low damage here or an acceptable amount of damage in this target. Generally speaking, I like it. It does help we've seen it before in TLCs. It does help we've seen it before in the raid, but I'm a fan of that target in general. I think it's a good selection. Let's get my Nemesis going here. My Nemesis X. And see if we can hit the level the level 62 target. 
you have to ignore that the fleet name is Dragoon 3. That, uh, that's left over from a while ago. It looks like I don't have this one upgraded. Again, not running a crew on these. If you are running one on the Nemesis X, I would advise going for a Missile Crew or even Sea Serpent Steelheads would be a good one. As well as the Missile Crew, which is the Wolfpack Crew if, I'm rem if I am remembering correctly. So... This is going to be the last one that's in the 60 set. Then we get into the brand new targets we haven't seen before. I believe for the Dragoon and definitely for the Pegasus. We haven't seen those before. So we'll be getting into that really shortly. Okay, let's see. This target is looking generally familiar. Is that the same target? Did I just hit the same one? No, that's a that's a different target. It just looks somewhat similar. It's a different one. Let's see. If I kill this thing right at the top here, the Nemesis, I'll be able to kill the Nemesis X now. Or the Ghost Crawlers. They don't have the little missile protection thing on there anymore. I might try and drive this one kinda kinda well to lure out some ships. If I split my flag off here, have it go outside the cloud, I can trigger trigger the trigger everything and get it moving towards me. Actually, it looks like the uh, viper fish is going to catch me before. Ooh, why is it stopping? That's new. The ship AI stops when you go into the flag. I think that was a change from a recent update, and it was an accidental change. Look, they're they're stopping. They're not circling in further. So the ship AI, enemy ship AI is is broken. You can probably exploit that somehow. I definitely, it's easier to take no corrosive damage. But the enemy ship AI and clouds here is definitely broken. Yeah, it's not broken outside the clouds. But using the clouds once you're in there, it breaks things. That's a bug report. That's That would technically be an exploit if you were to, to go ahead and hit this. I don't see any way to get free points or at least free points on a high scale immediately. Maybe someone else does, but this is definitely a tricky thing. Uh, definitely not intended behavior there. You saw they wouldn't keep circling; they would just stop. That's not that's not recommend. That's not what they were supposed to do. That's not what they did last raid. It was that part of that nine point four four nine point four five update that also uh, put the targeting in a way we did not like. That uh, that also changed around the ship AIs, and it said it was being looked into, but there was no no further notification or anything about that no further update on what what it what, what was the what was the result of that or what was being looked into exactly yeah it looks like these these viper fish here are stopping they're supposed to keep circling in but they're they're stopping which means they're not dealing any corrosive damage same thing for these ones right here it might be because they started in a cloud see alpha's commenting there and saying that on uh that the S targets can be prepped for Nemesis. That would be interesting. I might have to might have to look into that more. I I need to need to know a little bit more on that. What what are you taking out there to use Nemesis on it? Are you taking out the ships or are you taking out the buildings or a specific turret? The S targets are different and have some different things in them, which we'll definitely get to look at. But there there are some different things in there, so. They might be helpful against buildings generally. I wouldn't really think they'd be that good against ships, and that would make some sense. Oh, okay, you're saying, let's see, Diamite is clarifying, saying just the last building was left. Yeah, so if you go through and you hit the, you can probably leave just one building and you're still allowed to take the Nemesis in to finish it off. So if you're prepping for someone, then you'll be able to leave one building for them to kill with their nemesis. That's a good thing. That means you can help your alliance out, help your friends out. Uh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. So you're saying you can prep everything, not to do with the nemesis, but to prep it for the nemesis to be able to finish it off and get the bonus. Great. We'll, we'll definitely take a look at that. Battle report, 100% of the damage was penetrative, which is great. I took no corrosive damage, which you take corrosive damage when you mess up, which means I drove really well here. So, damage 45 minutes, uh, not great, but it looks like it's split 20 and 20 between these two ships. 
if you these are probably from the viper fish or the stonefish excuse me the damage cures from the stonefish is my inclination so those are the things that are targeting you doing the most damage and again the set 25k for each one pays up 50k total let's fire up my dragoons take those ones out see what they're doing that's some new things there looks like we're about 25 minutes in so we're starting to kick it up and get the uh, get the good ships out so if you want to if you want players to get more help now you, you could share this around facebook pages whatever on your on your game chat i don't care just say hey we're live now we're going okay dragoon fleet i'm gonna hit the 80 and the 82 and then the 402 which i'll need my scoundrel for level 80 target let's go and i don't know if these ones are new or not i would guess that they're old but that's just a guess you can take tier 8 ships in here, which means Eradicator will also work. Eradicators will also work in this target, as well as Dragoons. But uh, let's see, Matthew there is saying in chat, it's all old. Yep, we'll see that in a second. It it might be the S-set targets from last raid, or the one two raids ago. Let's see, Cuttlefish is asking, water on my Dragoons. Um, I'll show the build at the end, but it's pretty basic. It's um, it's Tyrants and Henchmans, Henchmans, Armor's Full. I'm cycling through their weapons there. Okay, this looks like a level 120 target from the first Dragoon raid. So, basic things you want to do. Target the UAVs. Keep moving. Avoid the big... Avoid the turret arts from the very small launchers. And there's a big... Um, oh, they're not in there. That's great. The big fire, fire turrets that shoot out here. The launchers, they're not in here anymore, which means you can auto this target. You don't have to worry about timing and things. That's wonderful. Let's see. Okay, so you want to, I mean, to go on blitz through, keep moving so the Wendigos don't hurt you, and target the UAVs. You don't have to worry about timing anything at all. This is, this might be a very, very easy way to do this raid. Especially if you have sprints, which I do. And, uh, I have one one tank ship. Everything else is uh, is damage focused, and w only one ship has UAVs. That was generally way, the way to go last raid, so it should be pretty good here. Oh, you're asking about the new packs? No, I don't have any of the new glaive packs on my on my dragoons. There's nothing. I didn't update the update these at all from last raid. I think I might have gotten one pack blueprint, but I couldn't afford the build time. I think my war pegasus was still building until about half an hour ago, so. I couldn't maybe they were tokens I could have used but no I don't have any of the new packs on my on my ship on my fleet Again I'm just driving through here target the UAV turrets when you can prioritize those ones maybe I should not rush in here cuz I'm getting shot out by a lot of things at once I'm getting a little bit overwhelmed but that's fine I um this is not going to be the lowest damage run ever It looks like everything's targeting ship one, which is what I would expect. Last last grade when we were using these, they targeted ship five, but now they're targeting ship one because of that new update, which is all right for this target. It's only going to be about half an hour damage or less. It shouldn't be that bad. If you drove very, very precisely, you might even be able to move one, one UAV in front of, or one ship in front of the other per UAV so you would you can move things around but i think this target will be instant repair back line and ever and the flag might have about 20 minutes or so of damage on it i really like the fact that they removed those big pyro turrets they removed the really big pyro turrets we don't have to take any damage from that which means you can auto this target i might try run on auto and see see uh see it yep we're matthew's commenting that this target is instant in base if you take it a little bit slower probably if i if i go slow and make everything really precise i could easily see this one instant in base and this target pays out a hundred thousand points and it's also part of a larger set bonus so this might actually be worth hitting if your pegasus isn't fully finished and you want to grind you could probably do that on this target and that it's another option that's good for people. That's, that's a good, overall good thing. 
We'll have to see about the uh, the 120 or the uh, 82 target also. But this is, I'm liking this one. Looks like I forgot a building at the bottom there. Let's see, what are my thoughts on this target in general? It depends a little bit on what the exact repair time is. But I really like that it that it is, uh, that the target has the pyro remove, which means you can auto it. That's great. Let's kick side making things easier for us. That's, I, I said that already, that's great. Damage here, mainly ballistic from UAVs with a little radioactive. That's when I messed up with the Wendigos or the Tempest launchers and took some damage. Repair time, 16 minutes. Yeah, look at that. Let's actually dock that fleet, see what I get there. And I'll show you my build when I do that too. Instant um, and base or close to it is going to end up being that. Now, I will complain, and I will say that if the damage was split evenly among all five ships, it would be instant. It would definitely be instant. 12 damage, 12 minutes damage to put among all five evenly, as it should be. Damage should be split evenly on all ships. It's not right now because of the way the ship the targeting works. I'm getting more damage on the flagship than I should. It should be about two and a half minutes for all, all my ships, but it's not. Let's see, did it, did my ship dock, did my fleet dock here? Is my, there we go. So it's, oh, it's 16 minutes. It should be split four minutes per ship, but it's not. It's mostly on the first one. Yeah, 11 minutes on my flag. It should be instant repair and base if the targeting worked how I think it should work and how most players think it should work, but um, it's it's not right now. If you drove better, you could get an instant repair, but that means, uh, it just means you have to drive a little bit better. And that target was 100K points. Let's, uh, let's actually throw on my back four and go uh, go hit the the next next scoundrel target or the 82 target the one before the scoundrel i'm going to instant repair my back line and go at the next one i'm not going to wait and or waste uh waste my repair token on repairing the flagship but i know this is great uh you should get to watch me repair ships yeah, Matthew saying that he was a fan when he was targeting Ship 5. That was all right. I would prefer to split everything evenly, not just target Ship 5. Uh, you definitely cannot move the flag. I can't switch the flag around. This is worse right now than it was. But the... Let's see. Yeah, Cuddle saying it looks good for autoing. I might try autoing later. Uh, or even while I do something else, while I hit something with my Pegasus, which is coming up, I might try hitting it... Uh, I'll try hitting the 80 or 82 on auto. But I can assure you that that's a con that is a, a conscious decision kicks I made to make the target easy for autoing. Perhaps for the game team, target team, whoever designs those things. That's a good thing there. 82, let's see. Oh. Let's see. Oh, I do not remember this target i'm sure it's we've seen it before i don't remember it because my first raid my dragoons were not finished first dragoon raid so i don't remember this target oh this is not an easy auto target we got one of them not the other okay these have the big pyro mercury throwers in here and it's i'm gonna have to time this pretty well because I have not, I haven't seen this one before, so I might might end up losing my fleet. Looks like if I go to the bottom right here, I'll be safe. Okay, yeah, I was safe there. I should be safe again at the bottom. And these are really, really spread out, so driving shouldn't be that bad, big of an issue. Yeah, someone saying, Kel Baconator there saying in chat that, uh, or Baconator saying in chat that he knows this target and has seen it before. That would make sense. Um, I believe that we've seen this before. I just personally haven't hit this before. So this is my true first look against this one. The others I, I maybe completed once in that raid. This is looking like a really easy target, honestly. Um, at least if you have the build fully done, which I do. I don't have any of the glaives on here. But the build is fully done from last raid. And I do have the flagship. I do everything all spiced up. Again, I'm prioritizing the UAVs. And the Wendigos are second choice when I get a chance. But you can avoid all the Wendigo damage if you keep moving.
And remember this target, I started out with 11 minutes damage on my flag. It looks like I've taken pr essentially no splash damage on the back. I will expect about another 10 minutes of damage on my, uh, on my flag from the UAVs, which again, if everything was spread out would be, ooh, that was, that was bad there. I took a little damage off that mercury thrower. Yeah, so I took a little bit of backline damage that I could have avoided. I stopped after that too. Did I take more? Oh yeah, I just took some more damage from the mercury throwers because I got lazy. Not too much. It's not too punishing, but it was. Yeah, so if I if I slow down a little bit in these targets, that's what you want to do. Slow down. Hey, everything go through, go through precisely. I can do that later when I'm making a video. Yep, just did it again. You have to time everything. You're in, you should be in no rush to complete these targets. You should be going nice and easy. At least the first couple of hits when you get your pattern down. And then you can speed it up a little bit and do things a little bit more more actively. Looks like a lot of the points are probably in this building down here. And if you want to prep this one too for someone else, you could do that by prepping this one out. Let's see, what are my thoughts on this target? I like it. I like the 80 more than this one, so if you have to hit one, I'd probably just hit the 80. Especially if you're autoing, then you can definitely just hit the 80. Maybe hit the 82 when you can drive, 82 when you can auto on your phone using the app or whatever. But uh, damage here was too high. I can drive better than this. It should be about 10 minutes, 12 minutes damage. I ended up taking way more radioactive. I should have taken zero radioactive damage. It should have all been ballistic. So my damage, instead of four, four or two hours, should have been... 10 minutes so you can't mess up it's punishing when you mess up but you can drive this one better i'll see if i get a video out of that or a video later on my channel with driving better great let's move ahead and hit the level 400 target um yes i did go fast through this one for the 400 i i could run my dragoons and my scoundrel at the same time, four dragons, one scoundrel. I could run the scoundrel just first and kill it, or I could run the um, yeah. I could just go scoundrel first. Maybe there's a retreat button in this target. We'll have to see. I'll, I'll I'm inclined to hit a scoundrel solo and ironclad dragoon fleet to clean up afterward. Let's see what ship, what fleet can I remove? I don't need my I don't need my silverfish this raid. Judging on the pattern. This target is probably that first level 800 target, level 900 target, whatever it was, from the first Dragoon raid, which I didn't hit because I didn't have a Scoundrel at that point. So this might be a little bit tricky, but hopefully not too bad. Again, my Scoundrel is U0, so I'm getting a warning that says they need a full fleet. Let's see how bad it is. I mean, the first two targets were 100,000 points. This one is up to 150,000 points. Okay. Ooh, yeah, I think that's the new one. Let's park in the corner and see. Yep, so I want to use my scoundrel to go through and kill these mercury throwers. What's the path? I'm going to move through in the middle there, kill these two. That seems to be a great first run. Oh yeah, I'm taking damage there from the uh, from the, the timing of that one. It could have been better. This is U0, so it could kill things faster. Okay, I guess in overload I moved through fast enough. Oh yeah, I want to target these... Uh, not the mercury throwers, but the other ones. Those those rockets the, that stun you. The, oh, the Pluto cannons. That, that's, that's what they were called. That's what you want to get out of here. You want to kill those. Not necessarily the mercury throwers. Mercury throwers are great to kill if you can, but you want to try and kill the Plutos first. That's the that's the tricky one that deals damage to you. I'm gonna try and suicide my scoundrel in here and kill all the mercury throwers as well, because those are still tricky. Um, they still they still make it easier. If I'm gonna kill my scoundrel, I might as well kill the hardest thing. And for me, those are those are these things. If you drive the scoundrel better, you can probably kill all the mercury throwers except for the two down here. 
which I'll try again on another attempt. But the, I got all the Pluto cannons, which is the, which is what you want here. That's the ideal. That's the bare minimum. You want to kill all the Pluto cannons. That should be enough to allow you to do this with your dragoons. And looks like I got a couple Mercury throwers too, which is just you know a fun bonus. Okay, fleet's dead, but uh, now I'm gonna bring in the in the, in the dragoons. Uh, comment: Am I skipping the? Am I skipping the Pegasus targets? No, I'm not. I'm doing those right after this. Right after this one is the 130 and 132. I'm going set by set. So uh, even this is the, even though this is the 400, it's part of the B set or the A set. So it's part of the A set. So I'm going through and uh, I'll do Pegasus right after this. Okay, dragoons are in. I'm going to loop through to the one that has no Mercury throwers. There's a lot of things in this target right here. A lot of things dealing damage to me. There is a retreat button too in this one. So if you want to uh, use a pinch on every single Pluto cannon and retreat every single time, you can do that. You can use a pinch on this one. You cannot auto it. That is, I'm sure of that one. But you can. You can hit this with just with just a dragoon fleet. It will work. Um, if you want to retreat two or three times and build at least a small pinch every single time. Okay. I'm going to stay moving, stay moving around so that after this Mercury fires, I can time it and run in and kill everything without losing my fleet more than I already have. Okay, we're fired. It looks like all the Mercury's fire on sync in this target. They all fire at the same time. I'm sure I could do this one Oh yeah, I just took some damage there. I need to, it's uh, there's no real spot to hide. Barely got out of that one in time. I think I can do much better on this one when I have time to focus and uh, get a path down and go slow. I remember this one already had like two hours damage on it before I did the target, so. And where's my last building? Oh, it's back here. And this target pays out 150,000 and the total bonus for all three, level 80, level 82, level 402, is going to be 100,000. So you get a grand total of 450,000 for the entire set which you should be able to do for a pretty low amount of damage and it's probably honestly better to do only the uh, only the 1882 just pick whichever 1882 is easier for you and just do that one because you don't have the suicide or scoundrel you can you still have you you can get it down to about instant repair, 10, 12 minutes damage, just hitting the 80 and 82. That's probably a better way to go than try and doing the set. The set bonus is not appealing enough for me to try and go out that way. Thoughts on this target? Um, I don't think people should be hitting it at this raid unless they're trying to complete the set and they have their scoundrel alive. Dragoons individually, better to just do the 80 and 82. But the target, it's a very complex one. It will, it will punish you for messing up. And uh, damage here. Oh, only about half an hour damage on my dragoons. But my build for my dragoons, uh, people are asking. Uh, no glaives on there. It's the same exact one as my fleet spotlight video I put out. I haven't changed it. My ironclad dragoon is U2. One of them is U3. And everything else is U0. And that's acceptable. Uh, it's an acceptable fleet build. I'm not worried about adding in a glaive cannon to add anything on there okay now we have the new things we have the pegasus pegasus fleet coming right up see do you all want to see the build first or the build after i'm inclined to show and build first from pegasus yeah we'll go ahead and do that one we'll do build first so here's my War Pegasus fleet. Uh, I like the name of it right here. Oh, someone else is saying after. I can show it after too. Okay, I'll show. I'll show my War Pegasus first. It's a. Uh, 
I don't have a tank version. Many other people do have a tank version, but uh, I'm just going six weapons, two anti-missiles, two of each armor, as well as penetrated battery, surgical strike warheads, Prometheus missile system. Some people have hyper 30 instead of that. I like Prometheus missile system because it gives anti-missile accuracy and range. Rapid roller bearings, high-speed missile jets, corrosive sink drive. I don't have a lower penetrative mount on here because when I was designing this, they hadn't changed everything around before that. The lower penetrative mount, if you don't know, was just buffed. So it's now a better option than whatever replaces it here. I don't exactly remember. What did the what did the lower penetrative mount replace? Did that replace rapid roller bearings? No. It replaced uh, surgical strike warheads. Nah, oh, it probably replaced... What did lower lower penetrative mount go on instead of? What is it mutually exclusive with? Is it high-speed missile jets? Yeah, you can put on lower penetrative mount instead of high-speed missile jets to have a slower fleet. But that deal, but that's a little bit better than everything else. That's the slower play style. Now, there are two tar there are two targets here, the level 130 and level 132 that Kicksai has that are two in different ways. If you see here my my Turin CICs, if you had an entire fleet full of Turin CICs, that would be better in the level 132 targets because you can go because uh, the Turin CIC uh, I think it slows you down. Is that true? Yes, it slows down every Pegasus and more Pegasus in the fleet. Even just having one of those slows you down by a bit. So it's slower, but higher range, better against enemy ships. I have two of this build in my target, same specials and everything. Same against everything. And uh, then I have two of the Turin, or Turin CICs, two Nessus CICs. The only difference between, between these two is on the Nessus CICs, I have missile armor, and the Turin CICs, I have corrosive armor. Uh, comment in chat there. Um, when there was there was a build offered that had that kicks I had it for twenty dollars. It's very similar to mine, but I I have two missile defense system threes instead of one. I think mine's better. I think you probably need to. I do have everything fully ranked here. As far as crews, I think I'm going to go ahead and throw on a where are you uh, wolf pack to increase missile critical hits. Might not be the best one, but we'll see. And I'm going to hit the, I have two of each CIC and the flagship, and I'm going to hit the level, level 130 target first. Now my ships are, as I was saying, I'm going with zero upgrades on here. I have no upgrades. All my ships are completely U0. I don't have any of the new CICs. I don't have anything else. I'm going with the build I showed you on my Fleet Spotlight video, Fleet Spotlight 14 on my channel showing my Pegasus fleet. Level 130 Shimmer's Nest, here we go. Fully ranked, fully built, and not upgraded at all. No fancy CICs, nothing. Again, the name my fleet is subscribe if you haven't, you know, just throwing that in there. Okay, 54 people, let's see what we can see here. Um, moving in, nothing much. Nothing's moving at you immediately. In this target, the level 130, there are some of those fog cutter missiles if i can find them at least that's what i was told on the on the briefing are there fog cutter missiles in this target i don't see any in particular let's see maybe this one has no fog cutter missiles it definitely has these well i'm going to zoom in these ones right here that look like the vulture those are called the testudo missile turret these are called these other ones are the tempest very short range corrosive turrets you shouldn't ever be hit by the uh, by the Tempest ones. Now there are also some countermeasure turrets. These yellow ones with the aura are countermeasure turrets. They will shoot down your missiles. As far as ships, looks like you can see everything. Don't have to worry about sonar, which is great. These ones are the dagger tooths, and they are moderate damage. They're all right, fairly easy to deal with, from what I read. The stonefish, which are a bit harder to deal with, they might stay submerged for a bit longer. Then the viper fish are really hard, to be honest, from what I've been what I've been told. They uh, they are they are better for or the viper or oh let's see yeah the viper fish are higher damage than the ones we're used to. 
Cuttlefish is confirming there is no fog cutters in this target. I might have read the raid, recent raid strategy cycle, whatever thing wrong. Let's move forward here. As soon as I see enemy ships move, I'm turning back. My fleet seems slow. Okay. Okay, oh yeah, these things are fast. These things are fast. They do stop when you get up to them though. I'm not taking a huge amount of damage. I split off one ship ahead as a tank. Not a not a ton of damage. Maybe running a tank is what you want to go. I think a, a tank war pegasus might actually be a good thing in these targets. Especially if I can speed everything else up somehow. That does not seem like a bad idea. Especially if you load out as many anti-missiles as you can on it. Vulture turrets don't seem very threatening at all. I'm shooting down most of the things. Okay, let's let's split let's split tank and move forward with that. You have to make sure that if you split off, off a tank, you have to stay inside the range of the of your other friendly ships to increase your your defense. I think uh, I think a war Pegasus um, would be more useful that way. You could probably even use other ships as a tank. I don't know if my war Pegasus has my highest corrosive defense. The armors on mine might need to change around a little bit. So far, not challenging. Here we go. Here's the Viper Fish. It's coming in hard. Um. Oh yeah, that does a that does a that does a piece of work on my ship. It does a decent amount of damage. I think about the the general repair I'm seeing from this after people get it down and drive really well is about an hour. And most of that's on the flag, so you will you will want to go with a tank tank general build. Make sure you're again staying inside your friendly aura with your war pegasus. I'm fighting too many ships at once here, aren't I? I should be fighting less things at once. Oh, get my pe get my pegasus in front. There we go. Do these uh, viper fish here have a minimum aura? Have minimum range. That'd be very useful to know. Because I think they were shooting at my other ships after I got inside. Let's test that out here. Okay, right now, it's shooting at my war pegasus. If I move closer, it shoots at my regular pegasus. So these do have a minimum range. That's very useful to note. You want to make sure you're not driving them too close. This is the high corrosive damage target. The ships are supposed to be the challenge in here. So you want really slow ships with high corrosive survival is the idea for this target. I'm not optimized. I have a mix. Half my ships return, half are half our Nessus. So this is designed for the Nessus, Nessus, Nessus ships, I believe. Let me actually see if I can open up the foreign post and read that to confirm that 100%. But what I'm seeing here is I believe that these are designed these are designed for the Nessus. Yeah, that's what the form post is saying. Nessus equipped Pegasus should specialize. It's obviously doable if two of mine are turn. Um, it's not great. Most of my damage was corrosive from the ships. Very little was penetrative. Total damage, an hour and 12 minutes. Remember, an hour and 12 minutes, I'm not going to repair between... I'm gonna go hit the next target, hit the level, uh, hit the next one, the level 132. So I'm actually gonna write that down. One hour twelve. For a first hit, that's decent. Stephen Tyler is asking in comments, or Stephen Tyler is asking in, com in the YouTube channel, is the fleet upgraded? No, the fleet is not upgraded. I'll show the build at the end, but this is zero upgrades on my fleet at all. 100% U zero. I'm not. Other people, they can coin X1, they can coin U3, they can coin U4. I am 
only going to I'm only going to do this first raid with a non-upgraded fleet to prove that it can be done. I'm going to give my thoughts on the on both targets after I hit them and show my build again. This is the uh, this is a 132. This is the higher penetrative damage target. This is going to have the fog cutters in here. And it's going to be recommended to hit these with Turin CICs, which I have two of, so I'm average. We saw something somewhat similar to this in DXP weekend, but the, the Turin CICs are uh, really good against the fog cutter missiles, which are these big ones that have the firing arc and the turret there. Where's where's the firing arc? How does that? Yeah, let's see. You can see the res the firing arc. So you're only going to get shot at if you're in the firing arc. Now there's a lot of them, so there's a lot of different firing arcs. Alpha's commenting saying they want us to build two Pegasus fleets. It kind of looks like a way to me. It will be doable with just one. But it, it does look like they want us to build two, which I'm not generally happy about. I think I'm going to show you that it can be done with one. If you want to just do with one, I'm going to show you how to do with one. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm saying just one fleet, you can do it. See, it looks like if my ships were a tiny bit faster, I could kite everything here. But I can't. If they were, so if I had all turn, I think I could kite these ships. And I don't know, if, will I have a longer range or lower range if I have the, uh, if I have the turn? Yeah, we're getting some people in chat saying we do not like that we have to build two fleets. Um, if you don't want to, don't. I'm showing you you can do with one. Okay, the uh, the Stormbringer or the uh, Fog Cutters are firing. It looks like they are very, very slow-moving missiles, so I can outpace them easily. I have no problems going going faster than these are, at least right now. Okay, this is this is a little bit tricky here, trying to kill things. Um, I'm splitting off my my flagship, so that tanks for everything. And uh, let's see, great, we killed all the ships there. Let's see, Cal Reckoning, you're asking in chat, uh, what's with the uh, X1 underneath the U3? That's that's uh, X1 means U4. It's the next upgrade past X1. It's called the experimental upgrade, and it will unlock the new new things for the Pegasus, like a uh, it unlocks two new CICs that allow health transfer, like the Skyfire, Gutspill Skyfire, that Gutspill's uh, Phoenix. That's what the X1 is. You have to upgrade, you have to get a lot of upgrade kits for that. So if, does turn increase range? I can't remember. I could check that up after this battle, but uh, I can't remember if turn increases range or decreases range. I know it increases speed. Is that true? Yeah, turn increases speed. So it probably decreases range. Okay, more turrets here. Again, I'm shooting down most missiles, but not all from these turrets. The way anti-missiles are supposed to work is you're supposed to just shoot once at every incoming missile. Okay, War Pegasus is struggling a little bit. Not a lot of health left there, but everything else has a bunch of health. 75%-ish left on it. Looks like I don't have to... Oh, oh, I almost drove right into that. The Fog Cutter here has a very short range, and I was almost not ready. And this bigger one here. So I'm going to get shot up by two Fog Cutters the instant I move past this a little bit. So I'm going to want to group my ships up, start one maybe a tiny bit earlier than the other so it tanks, and and drive in. Now these do shoot through the fog bank, so uh, anything when you're trying to avoid the fog bank won't, if you, you can't park, oh there's another one, we should have to keep moving in or I'm going to get hit by a splash. Where did that last one shoot from down here? 
So if I drive around this middle island in a circle, I will not avoid all damage. I won't avoid all them all firing. I should avoid all the damage, though, because I'm still moving. If I go through that red circle again, that's when it gets painful. Okay, turn CIC lowers range. Thank you, Christina, for putting that in chat. Turn CIC lowers range. Uh, so you you can't really kite ships as easily with that. Because at the extreme, if you go all corrosive, you'll have a very high range, but you'll be very slow very slow. And if you go and have a very high corrosive defense, if you go all turn, you'll have a very high penetrative defense, move very fast, but have a very low range. I'm going to show my build again right after this. Yeah, like I said, Nessus, Nessus will have all Nessus will be very long range with a uh, very high corrosive defense and a very low turn speed and combat speed. Looks like my War Pegasus is about dead. I need to do a little bit of changing around to my build and make things work just a little bit better. Um, and I'm still going to try and go with the one fleet. At least I'm gonna have my give myself the option of going one fleet, mixing and matching two ships from fleets or whatever else together. I don't wanna be dependent on two fleets. Okay, we had one hour and 12 minutes of damage on that first one. And the uh, total total payout from both of these was 250k and was part of a 500k bonus. So for 1 million points, my total damage, even gross of penetrative repair, for uh, 1 million points, my total damage was 2 hours and 28 minutes. Uh, most of this damage is on my flagship because I'm driving it as a tank. Uh, I'll show you my build again right here. War Pegasus. I think I'm going to go for some changes on this. I'm going to load it out with as many anti-missiles as I can. Go all corrosive armor. And that should be a basic enough change. I have some FM tokens I can do that with. And my next Pegasus is the turns I'm gonna keep my build the same on the Pegasus. If anything, remove a missile defense system three because I won't need it because we'll have more of my flagship and put on a put on another 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 missile. But if I build my my war Pegasus a little more of a tank, maybe I put on lower penetrative mount two to just add more tankiness instead of high speed missile jets. That should make my that should make my ships perform a little bit better in these targets. So, yep, yeah, thanks for the math there, Christina. One hour, 12 minutes damage on the first one does mean one hour, 16 minutes damage on the second one. Okay, thought on these two targets. The, uh, they both seem doable. The first one seems a lot easier, a lot simpler, because it doesn't have those big firing arcs. You're not pressured to keep moving. You can go slow. The second one seems higher paced. You have to move around more, more technical, more high skill level. But they're both doable. The initial damage I'm receiving is not great. I'm going to lower it. But for an initial damage, having only seen these targets once, it's it's all right. It's, it's acceptable. Gerald's commenting, use a crew that use good, uses a combat speed boost. It helps a lot. I agree. I think a combat speed crew, what's that one? Uh, Silent Hunters will help out a ton. Also, I think I'm going to play around with Pegasus builds for a minute. So I can show you uh, show you some different things I'm thinking here. If I I want to increase combat speed even more, make my ships faster, because they do seem really slow. I can. Uh, so here's my. Here, let's go to my shipyard. Okay, shipyard. War Pegasus. I'm going to. I'm not going to build the second one, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to refit it. I'm going all, all corrosive armor here. I'll need to get more of that from the FM or refit things off. Uh, do I actually have enough to go through corrosive armor? Did I, did I get enough armor for this? I'll need two slots. 
Yes, I have enough to go two corrosive armor, two more on my flag. So I'll have enough armor to go for this. And let's throw as many missile defense system threes on my on my ship as I can. And the other four slots here are razor plume missiles. So you they're um, weapon only slots, you can't put countermeasures here. I can change out my high speed missile jets though, and I can add lowered penetrative mount. And that will increase my survival for both corrosive and penetrating. If I, I'm not going to play around with CICs, but if I wanted to, I don't need surgical strike warheads anymore, so I can go for hyper 30 and have my ships faster and decrease any splash damage I take from corrosive from corrosive launchers. So this is probably going to be my next final build for my uh, for my war Pegasus. I'll see if I can refit it to that. Rapid roller bearing. Um, that's all right. You don't need it on the fly. You can just have something else to add range, penetrative range. Let's see. Everything else looks good enough. Uh, Prometheus missile system is still going to be. I think I'm going to stick with that. Have anti missile range, anti missile accuracy, and then my other backline holes. I might have to add hyper thirty two. I might have to take take this right here. If I replace Prometheus missile system with hyper thirty. I'll do a little bit less damage. My countermeasures on my backline holes will be a little less effective, but I'll be able to move faster. I think that will allow me to kite more things. So I think I am gonna have to go hyper 30 on here. I'll see if I have enough FM tokens for that. I do have a special here, corrosive sync drive on all my ships, which means I slow down to the lowest one. So I have a little bit of refitting to do. But uh, there's nothing I really need from this raid, honestly. I don't want the new interceptor. So I'll talk about a prize thing later on. Um, there's a couple videos. Oh, and Shockwave Flash has crashed. That's just wonderful. That's probably a good transition point anyway. There are another couple videos I'm going to make. I'm going to make a War Pegasus Fleet Spotlight 14.1 update video talking about the changes I'm going to be making to my ships. I'm also going to be talking about the... Uh, uh, I'm going to have a how to kill shimmery nests video where I go over how to kill shimmer nests, the turret that you see in there, how you kill them more easily. And so that's two videos. A third video, I guess I'm going to make videos of all the different, I'm going to make videos of all the different targets, go through and hit those, get them all nice and down, narrate those two, just make them more accessible. Videos of all the targets will be up on my channel. And, uh, you know, thank you everyone for joining in. I think that uh, Shockwave Flash there crashed with kick size, internal servers, tinfoil hat theory. They don't want me showing you uh, my build anymore. They're saying it's time to go. But I'm going to have a couple more videos here. And so make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if this live stream helped you, you know, you can comment that below in the live chat or the comment section. You can like the video if, it, if you enjoyed it. That lets me know that you like me live stream and like me playing more, doing this thing. And if you like it, I'll do it more often because I'll know it helps you. But... More videos to on the lookout for, some fleet spotlight videos, some target videos, as well as an assault cycle strategy video, how to kill chimera nests. I think that's about everything, and uh, I'll be in chat for a little bit longer if any of y'all want to talk about stuff. But uh, thank you all for watching, and as always, this is Derpy signing out, helping you be a better pirate.